All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone. Everyone's coming in. Everyone's getting cozy. Okay. So hello, everyone. Welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. Today, we have the fabulous Marley Bird ready for another exciting class, and we'll be crocheting the Easy Crochet Hearts. My name is Patricia from Your Inspirations, and I'll be helping you with any questions that you have today during class. Feel free to put in those questions in the chat, and I'll give Marley a nudge to answer them. Yeah. While you're joining the class, feel free to let us know where you're watching from. And just a reminder that today's class is being recorded, and you can find the recording at michaels.com classes. Over to you, Marley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. So uh, thanks, Patricia. I think it's the first time you and I have worked together, so I'm excited about that. Um, as she mentioned, we are going to be working on some really cute, like, sweethearts today. So instead of getting those little candy sweethearts, he's just making some little sweethearts. Um, I did a little twist, and I made mine into a stitch marker, like a crochet stitch marker, because we're doing crochet hearts. So I was like, you know what? I'll show you how to do this if you want to, because these little, these little puppies are super fast to whip up and they would be fun to add either to, um, you know, somebody's if, if you're in school and such, you know, doing a Valentine's box or decorating a card or adding as a patch to different clothing. Like they're just fun, quick, easy items to do. Um, and you can really whip out a lot of them, especially with a lot of scrap yarn you might have lying around or whatever it may be. Um, the pattern itself, I think they are adding it uh, in a link in the chat. So you should be able to get it. But honestly, once you watch me work through it a couple times, you're gonna have it memorized. You're not even gonna need the pattern. So just gonna throw that out there. Um, pretty simple stuff. So hopefully you have some worsted weight yarn with you. And I'm gonna be using an eye hook, which is a five and a half millimeter hook. You can use a bigger one. You can use a smaller one. You work whatever works best for you. This is not, there are no crochet police, you guys, and these hearts can be as big or as small as you want them to be. So we're going to be just fine. Cool. Patricia added a link to the pattern in the chat if you are interested in that. Um, as she said, my name is Marley Bird. I am a knitwear and crochet designer. I'm also the host of the Marley Bird YouTube channel and I am a stitch ambassador for Yarnspirations. Um, I've written several different books. I have a blog. I do a bunch of different things and I love doing these Michael's Community Classroom classes. So I see a lot of familiar faces here. Um, so I know that there are some of you that are like, yeah, 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 I know you get on with it. <laughs> so welcome, I'm glad you came back. That's actually one of the biggest compliments as a teacher is when you see familiar faces because it's like, oh, I came back. So that's always lovely. All right, so I have a, um, I have a hand cam, I have the face cam and all we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump over and we're gonna make this really super cute little tiny heart here. Is it gonna focus on it? There it is. You can see it's just a simple little heart. And then I added some jump rings and a lobster claw. It's really hard to hold up to make it a stitch marker. You don't have to do that. You could make it bunting. You could have them stand alone. You could do whatever you want. All right. So uh, Patricia, as I'm going along, if they have questions and you want to interrupt me, just say, hey, Marley, and then ask me the question and we'll be good to go. All right. Everybody good? Give me a up. Yep. Cool. Very cool. All right. Let's go to my hands, Felicia. And I am going to use this pink yarn. Hopefully you guys can see. If not, I also have this cherry red yarn we can use also. Move that out of the way. I was, I was knitting, waiting for class to start. So, you know, as one does. Okay, so when we start with this particular pattern, it's fairly simple. And the way the designer has this is she actually has you tie the tails of the yarn together when it's all done. So we wanna make sure we leave a nice long tail, not like, like super long, not like that, but at least like five to six inches, okay? And then you're gonna do your slip knot. So you'll go ahead and place that slip knot directly onto your hook. What we wanna do now is we're gonna chain three stitches. So we go around our yarn and then pull that through. So there's one, two, three. Our goal now is to turn these three chains into a ring or into a circle so that we can begin to work into the circle. 
So I'm gonna take my hook and I'm gonna come back to the very first chain I did here. And I'm going to insert my hook into that chain. Yarn over, pull through the chain itself, and then pull through the loop on my hook. So then it looks like you have like a little nubbin, all right? It looks really small, almost like it's a nothing, right? But honestly, in the center there, we've just, we've just made it a circle, right? We've just made it a circle right there. And this is where we're going to work. Now, the beauty of this particular project is that we don't have to work into the chains anymore. We literally get to work into that big circle that we just created. So we will start off with a chain three. One, two, three. After you do that, we're going to go and yarn over our hook and we will work two double crochets into the ring. So you yarn over your hook, go into the center of that ring you just created, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Now I will tell you, I'd like to keep those nice and snug. Yarn over, draw through two. So that was one, yarn over your hook, go into the ring, yarn over your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over your hook, draw through two, yarn over your hook, draw through two. Melissa, we will be doing a couple of these. I would say hang out, you just never know when um, it might become really quick and easy for you guys. Let me get through one and we'll do it again. Now I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna do three half double crochets. I yarn over my hook. I'm still going into this same ring. Yarn over, pull up a loop. So I have three loops on my hook and I'm gonna do a half double crochet. I yarn over, draw through all three. So that was one. Yarn over my hook, go into the ring. Yarn over my hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over my hook, draw through all three. I have one more to do. Once you do those three half doubles, we're down here and this is essentially the tip or the point of the heart. And so we're gonna do two double crochets. Again, we're all still working into that same chain, okay? Guys, I'm gonna make several of these, don't worry. So we will go through several of these. They are very quick to make, so it is no problem for me to work through this another time, another one, and do it even slower. So it will be just fine. Just hang out with me here. So I did two doubles here, okay? Now the beauty of this is you can kind of see it's upside down, but I, I've done half the heart, essentially, right? I've done half the heart. We are utilizing the height of the stitches to give us the heart shape that we want. So as I work the other part of the instructions, I'm essentially gonna be creating the other half of my heart, okay? So you'll notice that the instructions say I'm supposed to do um, three more half double crochets, okay? Here we go. <clears throat> three half double crochet, two what, double crochet and ring, three half, I did two double crochets down there, I apologize. I'm supposed to do one. I was reading, I'm supposed to do one down there, I apologize. So that's half my heart. So now I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna do three half doubles for the other half of my heart. Again, we're all still in the center, which makes it very easy. We don't have to find any particular stitch anywhere. Once I do those three half doubles, now I'm gonna end with two doubles. If you feel like your stuff is getting squished, you can just scoot it around the chains that you are working around. We'll put two doubles, one and two. Now we end with the chain three. You come down here to this ring and you'll do a slip stitch. So I yarn over, pull up a loop and pull that loop through. Grab your scissors, cut yourself a nice long tail and give that a pull. Now, as it stands right there, it looks like a heart, right? 
But the instructions say we're supposed to take our tail now, and on the opposite side, we're supposed to tie our tails together. And that's gonna really kind of pull that top part of the heart down a little bit to give us even more of a heart shape. If your first one looks more like a circle than a heart, that's okay, we'll make another one. This doesn't use up that much yarn and it doesn't take up that much time. We will make another one right after this. You can see there, there you have it. Now, if you left these nice and long, you could just tie them and add them to some bunting, like some chain bunting, and you could have something really fun there. Or you can weave in your tails and just have a little sweetheart, okay? All right, here we go again. You guys ready? Here we go. I'm gonna set that down. I'm gonna start with the slip knot. If you take the tail and put it in the palm of your hand, take your working yarn, wrap it around your forefinger and middle finger. When you come back up, cross over. Rotate your hand over, go underneath the front loop, grab the back loop and pull it off. When you do that, you get a slip knot. Everybody there with me. Yep, give me thumbs up. You can make a slip knot however you want. This is just how I do it. Just let's get a slip knot on your hook, all right? So I'm gonna do it again. I put the tail of the yarn in my hand. Take our working yarn, wrap it around my forefinger and middle finger, and when I come back up, I cross over. I rotate my hand over, and what I'm going to do is go underneath the front loop, and I'm going to grab the back loop and pull it off of my fingers. You see how it makes that knot? And if you pull those legs apart, you get a slip knot on your hook. Everybody got that? Yep, all right, okay. Now we're gonna chain three. Now this three here, you can make it, if you make it looser, you're gonna have a bigger center of your heart. If you make it narrower, it's gonna be a little bit tighter. But you know what, at this point, if, you're, if this is really like one of the first times you've ever crocheted, just make it really comfortable. You're gonna take your yarn and your hook, go around your yarn just like so, and then pull that loop through the loop that was on your hook. That's one. Yarn over your hook, pull that loop through the loop on your hook. That's two. Yarn over your hook, pull that loop through the loop on your hook. That's three. I will let you guys know if, if this is too snug for you, if you can't find your hole, if you wanna chain four, you absolutely could. It's not that big of a deal. You could chain four just like that. And then essentially what you're gonna do is this first chain you did, we're going to bring it up here and meet it up with our hook. We're gonna go into the chain and you're just going to yarn over your hook, pull that yarn over through the chain and then pull it through the loop on your hook, okay? So you can see there, I chained four, and so I have a little bit of a bigger hole there. And if that's easier for you to see, you absolutely can do that. It is, it is, I mean, there are no crochet police, y'all. It's okay. Okay, you guys with me so far? Yes? Okay. All right, this is where we're going to start. It's a one round project, okay? So we're gonna start off by chaining three. So we yarn over our hook and pull through one, yarn over our hook, Pull through two. I don't hold my hook like this usually, so it's weird. Yarn over my hook, pull through three. Now I do wanna point out, did you guys see that I'm pinching my circle here? Do you see that? I'm pinching it so that way these don't get really tight. And honestly, I'm kind of holding my hand there so that I can feel that hole and I don't let it get close, closed up. Okay, so that's like a little thing you could do there. So we have our chains three. And now we're gonna jump in to our two double crochets. So we yarn over our hook and we're gonna come over here to that hole. So whether you did three chains or four chains, whatever it is, find your hole. You're gonna go right into that big hole, yarn over your hook. Remember, yarn over your hook just like this and pull up a loop. So you're gonna have three loops on your hook, okay? Yarn over your hook and we're going to work a double crochet now. So 
we will pull through two stitches, yarn over our hook, and pull through two stitches. You got that? So that's one double. We're going to do another one. So we do yarn over our hook, go into that big hole, yarn over your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over your hook, draw through two, yarn over your hook, draw through two. All right? So those are kind of tall stitches. So as we come around the side of our heart, we want our heart to kind of come down to a point, right? So we transition over to a half double crochet. So with the half double crochet, you yarn over your hook, just like before. You insert your hook into that hole, just like before. You yarn over your hook and you pull up a loop, just like before. The difference here is that we will yarn over and we will pull it through all of these loops on our hook with one full, one full pull. So we pull it through all three of them, okay? Yarn over your hook, go into the space, yarn over your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over your hook, draw through all three. Yarn over your hook, go into the space, yarn over your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over your hook, draw through all three. You guys see that? So we have a chain three, a double, a double, a half double, a half double, a half double. Yarn over your hook, go into the space. Yarn over your hook, pull up a loop. We're gonna do a double crochet now. So when we do a double crochet, we yarn over and draw through two, and then we'll yarn over and draw through two, okay? So you yarn over, draw through two, you have two loops on your hook, yarn over, and draw through two. You guys see that? So that was a double crochet. This is the I'm looking at the heart upside down. Can you guys see that? This is the top of the heart. That's the bottom of the heart. Now we're getting ready to come back up. You guys see it? So I move, if your tail feels like it's in the way, I just kind of move it out of the way and I continue on. I kind of rotate my work around so that way I can kind of get to this other half of the circle. If you find that your stitches are really eating up that circle, remember you're working around this chain. So you can take these stitches and just scooch them. You can just scooch them to give yourself more room on that chain, okay? Can you guys see that? Okay, we're going to yarn over and we're gonna do three half double crochets. Yarn over, pull up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, draw through three. Yarn over your hook, go into the hole again, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through all three. That was two. Yarn over, go into the, the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through all three. You're going to go in and do two double crochets now. Yarn over, go into the stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. The great thing is that these stitches are the basic stitches of crochet. So as you're working through these, you're using really basic stitches to make something super cute. And it's just one round, which is fantastic. So we just did two doubles and now we'll chain three. So we finish with the chain three. One, two, three. We come back down here to this big circle that we have, right? Insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and draw through that loop on our hook.
we cut our yarn, give this a pull, and we have a heart. Now this one obviously has a bigger hole in the center because we did four chains, but does it really matter? It still looks like a pretty heart. So hey, the cool thing about, go, yes, go ahead. And I actually had a question that came to me. Mm -hmm. um, um, someone wanted to know if they wanted to make a bigger heart, um, how many uh, troubles, um, basically how would they make a bigger heart? Right. So that was actually, that was a question I had thought about earlier trying to say, since this is a one round repeat and we're using the height of the stitches to distinguish the, the different edges of the heart, you could, instead of using doubles, use trebles. And instead of half doubles, use doubles. Um, and then, you know, even further, you could use a double treble and then use a treble and you can make it longer. Now, when you do that, it'll make the heart bigger but it'll also make it much more airy because it just makes the stitches taller. You know what I mean? Um, if you're looking for a different heart pattern, like a big heart, there are other heart patterns out there. But for this one right here, if you wanted to go with this shape, if you just use different height stitches, you can achieve that. And I do want to remind everybody, like crochet takes time to learn. It's it's not like picking up a, a crown or a paintbrush and you can just color and paint no matter what. Um, you know, getting used to the yarn and your hook and the stitches, it's all about muscle memory. So getting frustrated is absolutely normal, but you have to be patient with yourself. And as adults, sometimes we forget to be patient with ourselves and it's important to do so. So these are very basic crochet stitches. It's just one round and you get a fun little heart to do that. And you can see here just what the difference is, you know, going from four in the round and I did two in the round or three in the round here as far as the beginning rounds and then I kept these really snug. As far as how to end Jennifer it's really it's just a slip stitch so I'll I can pretend let's pretend real quick that I'm going to do it okay so let's pretend that this was the last loop on my hook maybe <laughs> let's pretend that was the last loop on my hook if I can do this correctly and all I would do is I would go into this big space and I would yarn over my hook and pull up a loop and then pull that loop through the loop on my hook. And that's really all it is. It's called a slip stitch. It's almost an invisible stitch. All right, then you would cut your yarn and just pull that up and it just locks it right into place. How are we doing, Patricia? We are doing good. <laughs> All right. Does, uh, when is your next class? AJ wants to know. <laughs> um, I don't think I have a class until March, but I do have several classes that have been recorded here on Michael's, including um, a crochet, a beginner crochet class, beginner knitting classes. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of different levels uh, that we could go through. Do you guys want to see this again? For me to go through it again? Yes, Vicki is saying yes. All right, I can go through it one more time. It's not a problem. How about this one? We make it in red. Hopefully you can, if you can't see it, we'll make another one, all right? But I think you, I think you can see the red pretty good. All right, just remember to be patient with yourself, you guys, because this is, this is a new, this is a new uh, item for you, okay? If I'm going to use the red, I'm going to switch to my gold hook just so you can see the stitches, okay, guys? So I'm obviously going to get a bigger, a bigger heart. Uh, just purely because of the size of my hook. All right. So I have a the tail of my yarn in the palm of my hand. I take the working yarn portion. I wrap it around my forefinger and middle finger, and I come back up and I cross over. Rotate your hand, go underneath the front loop, grab the back loop, and take it off. Now there's lots of different ways to make a slip knot, you guys. That just happens to be the best way for me to show how to do it. So if you have a different way of making a slip knot, you can absolutely do that. All right, so we have our loop on the hook and we're going to chain three or four, whatever you wanna do. So I could do one, two, three. Now, just like I mentioned before, we want this first one we did is that too dark, you guys? Is that too dark? No? Okay. We I want this. See. Okay, good. We want this first one we did 
to come up here, essentially to come up here and meet with our hook. So that way we can do a slip stitch in it. And this is exactly how we ended the project too. Okay, remember we did a slip stitch. We went into our hole and then we yarned over and we pulled up a loop and then we pulled that loop through the loop on our hook. All right, that's a slip stitch. Now, because I chained three, my ring here, I'm gonna try and expand it, is real tiny. It's really tiny, which is difficult uh, to see. But once you get a, one stitch in there, you're gonna be like, all right, that's, that's where I'm putting my hook. All right, okay, so I have my slip knot. I formed a ring and I'm ready to begin. I chain three, one, two, three. Yarn over your hook. I'm gonna go into that ring, yarn over, pull up a loop. So I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over, and we're going to work a double crochet. So when you do that, I'm going to pull through two stitches. That leaves me with two loops on my hook. So I yarn over and I pull through two stitches. I'm gonna do that again. So I yarn over my hook. I like to give that double crochet a pull, go into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Now we're gonna do our three half doubles. So we start the same way, we yarn over, we go into the ring, we yarn over, we pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through all three. Yarn over your hook, go into the ring, yarn over your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over hook, draw through all three. Yarn over your hook, go into the loop, the loop, the ring, Yarn over your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over your hook, draw through all three. All right, so that was three half double crochets. Now I'm gonna do one double. Yarn over my hook, go into the ring. Yarn over my hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over my hook, draw through two. Yarn over my hook, draw through two. So I've made half of my heart. Can you guys see the heart? So it's, this is the, essentially what would be the top of the heart up there. So I'm working around the heart this way. Everybody see that? So I finished this half, so now I've got to come back this half. So I'm gonna do three half doubles and then I'll finish with two doubles and a chain three. So I yarn over my hook, go into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through all three. Yarn over my hook, go into the ring. Yarn over my hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over my look, hook, draw through all three. Yarn over my hook, go into the ring. Yarn over my hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over my hook, draw through all three. I have to do two doubles. Yarn over my hook, go into the ring. Yarn over my hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over my hook, draw through two. Yarn over my hook, draw through two. Yarn over my hook, go into the ring. Yarn over my hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over my hook, draw through two. Yarn over my hook, draw through two. I have to finish this off now. So I will finish with the chain three. One, two, three. And here's the finish. I come down here to the ring, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. And I'm gonna pull that loop through the one that's already on my hook. So I pull it through, that's called a slip knot. Okay. Once you do the slip knot, you can cut your yarn tail and the loop that's on your hook, you just extend it up. Give it a pull. That tightens everything up. And then, like I said, the designer 
has it to where you take the two ends and you tie them together. Into a knot. How are we doing, Patricia? I have stuff coming across my screen of what's what's being said, but I'm not sure what to answer and what not to answer. Let me see. Um, there's a couple of people. Um, oh, sorry, I just lost the chat. It's all right. Carolyn wanted to know, and I think we covered this question before, if you wanted to make a heart bigger, would I use treble crochet and double crochet instead of DC and HDC? Yeah, double a, crochet. Yep, that's exactly what Felicia had asked. That's exactly something you could do. Mm -hmm. And Christine's asking, mine still looks like a circle. What am I doing? So my first question there was, if, it, if my first question would be, if you're getting it to be a circle, are you achieving the different heights of your stitches correctly? Because you do want to make sure that your double crochet is taller than your half double crochet. If it's not, if they're both the same size and it's totally going to look like a circle, it's important that they have the different sizes. One way to control how your um, stitches are and make sure that they are the correct size is you want to make sure that your initial stitch you pull up is the same size as the hook you're using. So let me put a slip knot on here. Let's do this again. So if I chain three, I'm going to do a slip knot or a slip stitch, I should say, into the first chain. I'm going to chain three. And then here we go. So this double crochet, we want to maintain control of how big this stitch gets. So if, as I yarn over my hook to start, I, I use my middle finger to hold on to not only the loop on my hook, but the yarn over to make sure they're the same size as the hook I'm using. Then when I insert my hook into the ring, notice I keep the ring and the loop and the yarn over all kind of close together. So when I yarn over, and I pull up that loop, it's also brought up to where it's right in line with those and it's the same size as my hook, okay? When I yarn over and I draw through two, the first thing I do is I have, this is now a partially completed double crochet. I tend to pinch it. I don't let it get any bigger, okay? And then I yarn over and I draw through two. Now another part of this, I'm gonna do that again. You yarn over your hook, go into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop. If you pull this loop up like this, you are not getting a consistent size of your stitches. All of the loops on your hook need to be the same size as your hook. So you need to make sure they're all down here the same size as your hook. You'd yarn over, draw through two, and yarn over and draw through two. So those would be my doubles. Now, as I work through my half doubles, I do the same thing. I keep those nice and snug together, go in, yarn over, pull up my loop, keep them nice and snug together. And then as I yarn over and pull through all three of them, you can quickly see that those are definitely shorter than these. If you're still struggling with all of this, technically you could make these trebles and you could make this, you could keep this as a half double and get an even more significant look. I will keep going here with my half doubles just so that you guys can see another one getting made here. I'm gonna do a double. You guys will always, like I keep my, my stitches as I make them, I keep them nice and consistent. And I make sure that they're all the same size as the hook I'm using so that way I can achieve whatever the gauge is I want to achieve. Oop, I've been doing doubles. Um, now, obviously for this particular item, gauge doesn't matter at all, but it's good to keep that in practice. 
These are fun too, you guys, if you have like a glue gun and you want to um, glue them to a little girl's barrette, they're a fun way to do that. You could add them as like dangly bits to a scrunchie. Um, you could glue gun them to a headband. I mean, there's all sorts of things. You could even put them in a row and then crochet around them. Lots of stuff yeah. you can do. Did I just do a double? I think I did. Hold on. I did. Here's my double, one, two, three, and I just did a double, so I need to do one more double. You could sew the holes closed, absolutely. Chain. Em wants to know, Yes. how could I turn these little hearts into a garland? So one thing you could do, let's talk about that. So I like to turn little things like this into garland. I think it's just fun. Um, I will often go through and then I would weave in my ends first, but I'm going to, I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. Like I would just, you know, pop my ends through to the opposite side and be done. But if I wanted to turn these into garland, let's say I wanted to take these three here. First off, I would weave in those ends, but let's say you wanted to take, let's use white, white over here. Um, okay. So if I use white yarn, let's just chain some. So let's see, you want the garland or like a bunting or whatever you want to call it. Um, you'd want something to tie it to. So you'd start off with just doing a bunch of chains, right? Until you get it the length of what you would want it to hang down from, okay? So whether you wanted those hearts up here at the start or if you wanted yourself to have some nice, some, some little room to go. What I would do is I'd get to this point, I pick up my heart here and I would just stick my, my hook right through the center, yarn over, pull up. And just like a slip stitch, you could slip stitch it on. You could do a single crochet to make it a nice kind of join. I like the single crochet. So I just single crocheted there. Do you guys wanna see that again? I did that kind of fast. So I just chained some, insert my hook, Yarn over, pull up. So I have two loops on my hook. Yarn over, draw through two. Now let's say let's say I chain 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I can pick up the red, do the same thing. Insert my hook, yarn over, pull up. Yarn over, draw through two. And then we do 20. Kelly's asking, my center hole is huge. Any chance you know why? Um, it could be that your chains are just larger and just the, the nature of the way you crochet. Um, and it's, you know what, it doesn't have to be that bad. You could always, when you go to weave in your tail, just cinch it up a little bit closed. Um, if, if, if your, if your center is a little bit too big, um, yeah, my, my guess is just that it's just the nature of the way you crochet. You probably chained rather large and then your stitches are a little bit larger too. So it's, it could happen that way. All right. So let me just kind of, I don't even know how many I started with guys. So I'm just kind of going. So you get to however many you want at the end. Your yarn just like before, just give it a pull, tug it, and then now I have like hearts hanging. And I could tuck in my ends, and I'll show you how you can just close. Let's just pick on the red one. Oh no, let's pick on the pink one, it's easier for you to see. So I would take one at a time, I thread it onto a tapestry needle. And you could come in here and as you go around your stitches, give that a pull. Maybe you just, just try and cinch it up a little bit. The good news is if you're doing these and they're not gonna be played with too much, you don't have to stress too much about weaving in these ends, but you can use the tail to your advantage to kind of pull that close. You see, see how I just going around like that, it kind of pulls it like a drawstring, mm -hmm. yeah? Was that visible? I mean, on my, I can see it clearly, but I don't know if it's showing you guys very well. 
You see that? It just pulls it really closed. So if you're going to do that, though, I would like because this could come undone with, you know, if it's going to be pulled a lot and stuff because you're just pulling a little drawstring. So then you just kind of come through and just tie it. And then you can just snip these off. Oops. And you have an even more dramatic heart going on there. You could do the same for all of them. How's that? Do you guys like that? I'm trying, I really am trying to be helpful. I, I hope you guys can see that. Well, Kim is loving it and awesome. And Cam thinks it's awesome. Good. <laughs> Isabella Good. says that you could make a cute little choker necklace. That'd be super yeah, cute. you absolutely could. I mean, you could even do some um, like thread yarn instead of like thicker yarn and make it like really delicate hearts. Here, I'm going to close this one up. Just you guys can see here. I'm just going around. I'm threading it essentially. I'm following along the lines of where the chain was. So that way I can act like a drawstring. And I will caution you, if you do this on other pieces to close things up, like I said, you want to make sure you really sew the piece in afterwards so that way it doesn't come undone. You can see here, you see that? Just pulling it closed. Now, if I just left it like that, that will gradually come undone, especially if you're like making it on a blanket or something. So if you do something along these lines, you do have to go back and really make sure that you have this end woven in so that it won't come undone because that happens so much. But if you just go back and forth a couple times, You'll be fine. You'll be just fine. And then I can undo this one. Yeah, I'm just doing a little bunting here. You could embellish with beads. You could do all sorts of stuff. Yep. So there's that. How are we feeling? We have we have some time. Do you guys want to see how to make it a stitch marker? Just kind of curious where 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 your interests lie. I think that sounds great. I know a lot of people were saying a book marker. Yeah. Uh, that would scrapbooking. Be mm -hmm. There's lots of little things you could do with this. Oh, and Liz wants to see, uh, wants to know what size the lobster clasp is. Oh, that's a very good question. I don't know. I just grabbed one from my stash. <laughs> so I'm not even sure. It's not super small, but it's not one of my really big ones. It's just kind of like the in between. I have no idea how big it is. So I apologize. It's I don't even know how to give it a, a measurement at all. Like, honestly, hold on. I grabbed, I grabbed a little thing here for the jewelry stuff. Can you see it? Does that give you a better view of what it is? I just have two jump rings and a lobster claw. That's what I used here. Um, let me weave this in and then I'll make this one into a um, stitch marker. And I mean, you can make it a stitch marker for knitting or crochet, whatever you want. You could turn it into earrings um there's lots of little fun things you could do here right just i mean and, and like i said like it's it's basic basic crochet stitches here um but it will take time to develop the muscle memory to hold your hook to work the stitches to do the things you need to do um so i i understand if this is the first time you've ever done it it feels frustrating i mean i would always start off like I would not learn to crochet to, you know, and make this learning to crochet, so to speak. Like I would, I would take a learn to crochet course and then let this be one of your first projects. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. I think that's personally, that's what I would do. Like I said, it's not like painting or, or, or coloring or anything like that. It, it requires some muscle memory and skill. Okay. So I've tucked in my ends. And you guys are going to see my, <laughs> I dropped my box. So everything got mixed together. So it's like a hot mess in here. Um, and I just have not had time to mix it up. But essentially, if I grab a jump ring, hold on, jump ring about that big. So that's a big one. And then I can grab a smaller jump ring or even a split ring, whatever works. Like there's a smaller jump ring. Okay. And then um, so here's a big lobster claw if you wanted to use a big one. 
Here is a smaller one. And I know that Michael sells all these. Um, you could also get, like, if you get uh, fastenings and stuff, like, um, to make necklaces, you can also do that uh, to use, like, the, the clips on those. Like, there's a bunch of different ways. But so I'm not going to use the big one. I'm going to use the small one. And I'm just going to do this. Um, I'm using some, I don't even know, guys, I'm not a jewelry maker. Like they're just flat nose pliers. You know what I mean? Jewelry pliers. So I'm going to put those down there. And I also, nope, that's it. That's all I need. Okay. So this is all you do. When you're dealing with jump rings, this is something I didn't know at the time. So you'll see that there's like a little hole right at the top of the jump ring. You don't want to split the jump rings apart like this you want to go like this, okay? You want to twist them. So if you grab one side with um, your pliers and the other with your hand or another set of pliers and just slightly twist them open, okay? See that? Grab your heart and just stick it right through that top part of the heart. And I use my pliers to do this, just to hang on. You guys see that? Make sure it's through the area you want. move my end in so well it doesn't want to go through. Come on. There we go. Once I get that in there, I actually close it. So you close it the same way you opened it. You just kind of go back and forth and get it to where it goes back to where it's as close to center as possible. Okay. So what I do is I take that opening bit and I kind of tuck it back down into there. You guys see that? Okay. All right. So now I take the smaller jump ring, it's the same process here. I'm gonna open it, take the small lobster clasp and just put it right onto that jump ring and then take the other jump ring and put it on here. Close it up just like before. I like to give it a little squeeze and there you go. So you can apply that to your crochet project now if you want, or turn it into earrings, do whatever you want. But there you go. Pretty it's easy very stuff. Cute. It's so, it's, I mean, it's just simple. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Does that make you guys happy? Do you have any other questions? Like I, I'm trying to just decipher through what, what's coming through. Well, Kim wants to know if you can show the treble stitch to make it bigger. Sure, I can do that. We have time. Let's move these items over here. Let's use the pink again. Move that out of the way. Oh, goodness. All right, so slip knot, tail over the palm of my hand, working yarn around my forefinger, middle finger. When I come up, I cross over, rotate my hand, and pop out. Okay. Oops. Um, I'm gonna chain four just because. So one, two, three, four. Let's give myself more of a place to go into. Go to that first chain and do that slip knot. Okay. If I'm gonna do a treble, I I'm trying to think here. What do I want to do? I think I'm still going to start with my chain three. Let's play with it. I'm going to start with my chain three. Now I'm going to do a treble. So I would yarn over my hook twice. Insert my hook into that ring. Yarn over my hook, pull up a loop. Now notice still, I kept all my loops right here on the, on the, this portion of my hook to keep them all the same size. Now we're going to systematically go through and yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. So we yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, notice I pinch, draw through two, yarn over, I pinch, draw through two. So that one's already bigger. I'm gonna yarn over twice, insert into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. All right, so you can see there, those are really tall, right? Now, I mean, if I'm going, 
if I'm going free willy here, guys, let me just, let me indulge me for a second. I'm going to yarn over and let's do a double crochet next after the treble, just to get a little bit of a shape there. And now I'm going to go into my half double. So I'll do two half doubles and let's see what we get here. See how it looks. So I'm getting more of a shape like that, right? Let's do my double, which would be the bottom. Can you guys see that? So I chained three, I did a treble, a treble. And then before it was three half doubles. Well, I just made one of them a double and then I did two half doubles Then I did a double. So now on this side, I'm gonna do two half doubles and then a double and then two trebles. All right, so I'll do two half doubles because remember it's like it's like a mirror. So there's one. Let's do two. Then let's do a double. Now let's do two trebles. So I yarn over my hook twice. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over my hook twice. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. I'm gonna finish with the chain three. Come back here to the start. Let's do our slip stitch. I'm gonna cut my yarn. Give it a pull. Let's see what we got here. We have a much bigger heart happening here. Let's tie these two ends together. And I'm doing that because that's what the pattern says to do on the other, so I might as well just do it. You can see there a much more significant looking heart. Not my pattern, y'all. <laughs> right? But I mean, I guess that's my pattern. <laughs> that's my pattern. There you go. Can I go over what I said again? Yes, I can do that again. I can make another one. Do you guys want me to make another one just like this? Yep. All right. I can do that. All right. So we'll leave that one. So I did a chain four. So I'll start with that again. Set that aside. So I chained four. One two, three, four. Somebody said they want to put the original. Here's the original. Here's the original. And here's the new one. All right, so I chained four. I'm going to slip stitch into the first chain that we made. And then here we go. I chain three. And now I'm going to do two treble crochets. Yarn over my hook twice. Go into the ring. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. So that's one. Yarn over your hook twice. Go into the ring. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. Now, because I want an easy transition from this height to the half doubles that we were doing on the other, I'm going to do one double crochet. So I yarn over my hook, insert into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. So that's my double. So I went from a chain three, which is essentially a double, to two trebles, to a double. Now I'm going to do two half doubles. So I yarn over, go into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through all three, yarn over, into the ring, Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through all three. Now I want to do the point where I want it a little bit longer than the half double. So I'm going to do my double crochet. So I yarn over, go into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. So there's my half of my, my heart. So now I want to mirror that over here on this side. So I'm going to do two half doubles, a double, and then two trebles. And then I'll end with the chain three. So I'll start with my two half doubles. The double. 
and then two trebles. Then I'll chain three. Come down here to the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull that loop through the one that's on my hook. Get my yarn, give that a pull. Kind of pull everything into shape. I'll tie these on the opposite side. How's that working out for you guys? Janelle, this says you make it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's because I have established some pretty good muscle memory over the last 25 years I've been doing this or 22 years. I'm not sure. But those, I mean, hey, I'm with you guys. I like these hearts better. I mean, and I'm not just saying that because they're mine, but they do look like more definitive hearts. But these are cute too. Like they're, I mean, they definitely look like hearts. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I actually really like the bunting idea. I think it's super cute. It looks uh, great. That's adorable. But, and then I like stitch markers. So, I mean, that's just a fun little way to do something fun or make, make them into earrings. Like the same way guys, you could turn these into earrings, just put that jump ring there and then make it like a, um, like a wire hanger earring. You know what I mean? I can't think of the, the term, but you could totally make these into earrings and have something fun. I don't know. Pretty, I mean, it's pretty easy stuff. Was that second one, was that easier for y'all? Yeah. Well, Kim was saying that she's never done a treble before and oh. it was tricky, but it turned out good. So good. I think the trick when it comes to trebles is controlling the size of the loops on your hook. If you allow those hook, those loops to get too stretched, your treble can be just ugly. But if you control the size of those loops on your hook, as you're creating the treble, as you're yarning, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, you make a nice and tidy um, treble stitch. I think you could probably go back to my face, Felicia. You guys got me here. I thought I thought I was gonna just like be done with this class in no time. I was like, this is such an easy little stitch. I don't I was I was so afraid that I was not gonna be able to fill up a whole hour, but we did it. I mean, we made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Um, little mark, well, six little markers. I think I already had that one made, right? So we made six little, little hearts. Look at that, look at Denise. Holy moly, she is in, wow. Felicia, you need to highlight that girl. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, look at that, you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no. Denise. That's amazing. <laughs> See, that's amazing too, I saw yours. Oh my gosh, Darcy, how'd it go? Is it good? Show me yours, hon. Darcy, are you doing well? Look at you, Jennifer. Oh my goodness. I love it. I love it. I want to know what Darcy's going to do with, or not Darcy. I want to know what um, Denise is going to do with all those hearts. That's awesome. She's got That's a heart. A She's like, you get a hour. heart and you get a heart and you get a heart. <laughs> uh, it's pretty fantastic. I love that. Garland. Fantastic. That is so cool. Um, this is this little thing is fun. I could, I could handle that. Anyways, I hope this was, uh, was helpful for all of you. And, and those of you who are like brand new, seriously, you have to give yourself some patience and learn stitches. My biggest piece of advice for you is to take a crochet 101 course. Um, so that way you can really learn all of the stitches and start to develop some muscle memory before you jump into something like this. Um, I mean, as simple as this is, it still requires being able to finagle the hook and the yarn and make things work because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not like it, I keep, I'm, I'm not picking on painting and cray, Crayola, like crayons, like there's awesome stuff there, but you know, anyways, there you have it. Yeah. Well, thanks <laughs> Marley. <laughs> and thank you everyone for joining us today for this live community classroom with Michaels. We would love to see your whips. So share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and your inspiration. And just a reminder that you can find more classes at michaels.com. Awesome. Good job, Judy. I love it. Yes, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you guys. Oh, cancer companions. Fantastic. Good job.
Oh, you guys did so great. I hope to see you again.